So, here's our first question. Are you ready? Yes. Great. If you were to rename yourself, what would it be and why? I would say uh, the biggest thing would be to go for the expression of namelessness because I truly believe that instead of having more names and identities attached to our beings, we should actually let go of them. The whole idea of humanity that we should add things is something I don't agree with anymore and I believe more so in letting go of things that also includes names. That will change the whole concept of giving names. Exactly. Great. So, uh, having travelled from east to west all across the globe, which has been your favourite place? India, for sure. <laughs> I love India. I, this country has, um, I think having grown up in it, uh, having left the country and coming back to it as a spiritual seeker, I look at everything in India with a very different lens, uh, which I didn't see before when I was younger. So, to maintain your health and body, what are your dietary choices and your exercise regime? Uh, so uh, I try to you know, keep an active lifestyle. I think that is the most important thing to do for modern day humans because we've created a world where uh, our lifestyles are not active anymore. We're very much dependent on technology and gadgets and you know, we're living inside concrete boxes. So it's about creating a healthy lifestyle. That's Great, what I that goes with the Japanese concept also. Yeah, yeah. And that's why they live the longest. And uh, the audience cannot really see your open hair, but I would really like to know the recipe for your thick and glossy hair. I mean, I think it's a major part is genetics. Second, uh, um, I think keeping the mind stimulated will feel fresher, younger, and things will glow. Perfect. All right. So, uh, what has been the innermost hurdle? in your life? Uh, I think uh, last, uh, the first few years of being in India was quite a challenging time for me, for my inner self, because I was uh, on this deep quest of finding things, which I didn't even know, know what I was looking for. I guess answers to you know life's quest and all these things. And I was going through a stage of a lot of extremes. Uh, I was harnessing rage and anger and I was also acting in very self-destructive ways in the sense where I just didn't care what was going to happen to my body. Even if I died, I just didn't care. So that was a period of my life which was, uh, many would say, even including myself, was a very much period of extreme. Mm -hmm. uh, to find answers, to find the truth and all those things. And that made me go through uh, hell within myself until a point I became I came in peace with that hell. Great. So that journey from your inner hell to stepping out, having fought your own demons, as you say, to the outside hurdles. So yeah. what was your biggest or most challenging physical or the outer hurdle? Oh, uh, I think uh, just one and a half years ago, almost two years ago now, I did a walk through all of South India. And uh, through that walk, uh, it was a long walk, and I think the conditions were really bad, uh, weather and environmental conditions. And during the walk, I, I was really injured, and uh, you know, I met some doctors on the way as well, Ayurvedic doctors, and they told me I may not be able to walk again, and you know, all these things, and, and I was just still walking. It was just that extreme phase of life. And, um, and I think my whole quest at that time, all those years, was to overcome the fear of death and fear of attachment to this body, which we so deeply have. This body, this identity, all those things that come along with it. So the whole idea was to let go of that fear. That's interesting. Yeah. So is there any secret which you haven't mentioned in these books of yours? I wouldn't say secrets for se, but uh, because there are so many experiences in the kitty, I. I cannot possibly mention everything in the books. It's almost impossible because they're such uh, unspeakable experiences. And so I think I, you know, it's just because of how things are in the material world, I just possibly cannot explain them in the books. All right. You, can you just share with us where do you see Kartike five years from now? I really don't know. I really don't know. I think the big thing I've learned from these years is to kind of take life as it comes, you know, go one day at a time, try and give your best every day, every second of your life, 
and be honest and authentic in what you do to try and be of service to other people and just be more in the present and live more in the present. This actually compels us to follow Kartike on all his social media handles. Yes. It's, so, one last message that you'd like to give to our audience. I think a message that I would like to share with your audience is to keep on facing your fears, keep on going past your comfort zones and, the, and keep on seeking more in life, asking the questions about why you're here, what you're here for. These questions are not going to take you in a wrong direction, they're going to take you through a path which will make you face yourself and your fears. And until unless we realize the higher forms of our living, we will never truly be able to experience life in its full authenticity. So just go and live in the best possible way that you can. Great. That was quite enlightening. Thank you so much for being with Thank us. You for me. And keep spreading love and light. Stay empowered. <laughs>